Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we're taking out the Tier 9 British fighter known as the Attacker. Uh, visually, I think this thing looks kind of goofy. Very straight wings, not what you would typically be expecting when it comes to a turn, or I should say, when it comes to a high velocity fighter. This is going to be kind of our step out of the high maneuverability Spitfires, but then breaching more into the high altitude, high speed aircraft. Now, I say high altitude, and high altitude really is just compared to its predecessors. Yes, Spitfires can get up to higher altitudes, but this thing is able to get up to about 6,500, which is where its operating altitude kind of lies. But at the same time, you also get massive massive amounts of acceleration, so much so that it actually has higher acceleration slash climb rate and higher overall speed than believe it the than if you can believe it the uh, 183 does, which is totally not what people expect when they hop into this airframe. Especially since that's kind of the 183's claim to fame aside from the 430's. Yeah, I'm not in a zone, but that guy needed to go. We're going to do our best to try and keep this zone in our control, or at least get it in our control. Uh, it will not be an easy endeavor, I will tell you that much. Uh, we do have that incredible speed, like I mentioned before, and we get pretty strong cannons. These four 20s are very consistent and consistent in their behavior. They're slightly higher damage output than your standard 20s that you had on the Spit 14. And we are just overtaking that aircraft repeatedly. What do we got here? That's the TU-12. I really don't want to fight with the TU-12 right now. Because the TU-12's tail gunners will decimate me. So we're just going to let him pass through. We have a fighter down here that's low health. We have a 10 second turn time, which is gonna rival most fighters at this uh, tier bracket, or at this altitude bracket, I should say, and tier. That was a ram not intentional there we go we picked up the zone which is what we were really hoping for that is not the player the J7W I'm going to have to look out for because if he gets in here and he starts doing his tourney tourney games I'm going to be at a bit of a disadvantage I want to keep my ground attacker player safe so that's exactly what we just did there. And now we're going to work our way over and help our ally flip this next zone. Because I'm not going to be able to do much against that TU-12. Especially a specialist TU-12. Don't head on the 152. We should be able to outturn him. He's like an 11 second and some change maneuverability. We're definitely going to be able to outpace him. Of course, he is going to be a different tiered aircraft than us. He's only a tier 8, while we are a tier 9. He did wander back into the zone. Come on. There we go. Heavies are the defenders for this zone, which is perfect for us because we have the ability to stick on them and maintain chase up to the altitudes they sometimes like to get up to. Let's find another one. Is that what I think it is chasing in here? Yeah, it's the J7W1. The J7W1 is still prop driven, so we have a bit of an advantage against him in that respect. I am going to bet that he is coming in for a run on us. There we go. Don't be consistent. Be confusing. We're going to burn through on him. If he gets those 30s on us, we're in some serious trouble. Uh, we managed to flip the zone anyways, which is what I was really hoping for. 
We're getting some big shots on us here. I don't know what that is. That is a fighter aircraft of some kind. What are you? Oh, it's the 152 trying to get some revenge here. We have pretty much the same turn time as the J7W1 here. But if he ends up getting the advantage on us for getting into a head-on, he's going to have the edge and we are not going to be able to compete with him. So we're just going to dip out of here and move on to the next area and try and help our ground attacker as he proceeds on to get another zone. Oh, not what I was hoping for. There we go. Tried to maintain the zone. Oh, looks like they picked it up. There's that TU-12. He's pretty hurt. I'm hoping a combination of air defense, aircraft. Oh, we got a heavy on us now. Yeah, he's an altitude fighter in that MiG-9, but... Like I said, we have the ability to get up there if need be and engage. Let's find an aircraft that's not paying attention. I want to go after this J7W1. That's going to be a risky endeavor, but he's too dangerous to leave alone. If we can G-strain, get that nose around. There we go. Picked it up. My best hope for survival here is flipping the zone. Likelihood's get looking less and less as I just miss all my shots. I'm finishing off that one aircraft. There we go. Whew. There's a lot of aircraft here and we are not high on health. There's a lot of defense aircraft that are low. I must have burned that one out. Nice, nice, nice. It looks like my ground attacker is doing good work here. Oh, that's a 410. I don't want to let him get hits on me here. That's a bot defender. Oh, we picked him up. We managed to flip the zone. Nice, nice, nice. Woof, what a tough fight for us. That is going to be the Seahawk. Cool. Looks like he is going after our bomber should be able to give chase to him. Nobody else is around. It's just him. As long as my bots don't spawn in and ram me. Perfect. Whew. How are we doing? We definitely don't want to lose any of our aircraft here. Let's get some heals up. Solid, and I am confident we'll be able to get this. Build up some altitude, altitude equals energy. What do I have here? Fighter aircraft, that's the 152. He does have the capability to dirt me out of the sky if I'm not paying attention. Uh, but then we got the MiG-9 as well. We're getting sandwiched. I may have bitten off more than I can chew here. 
We can outturn both, but we have a lot of aircraft we're fighting with right now. So looks like the TA dropped off. I'm doubted that was going to make any of those shots connect. If he turns, he's in trouble. There we go. He just lost his advantage, which was the engine. And, whew, solid battle. Solid, solid battle indeed. As you can see, we got a plethora of medals here. I really wasn't expecting that. This is the second attempt at a recording. First one was a decent battle, but um, I kind of flummoxed when it came to talking about the aircraft and the post-battle results. So let's see if we do a better, t better job this time. Uh, some of the things I noted and realized while I was talking about this aircraft in the previous post-game is that this aircraft, comparing it to another Tier 9 fighter, I don't really have any. At least I didn't think so at first, right? Because I do have a bunch of fighters that you can see here as my Tier 9s that are available. But uh, they're completely different in the way that they play. They're, they're very different. I mean, the F6U is clearly going to be an interceptor with no real turn capabilities, but sports the same altitude performance that we see with the attacker. Not great altitude performance, but pretty good altitude performance. Uh, and then you have like the 183 has much better altitude performance, but terrible turn time as well. Uh, at first, I thought the 183 would actually have a better climb rate, but the attacker actually is a slightly better one in the current configuration uh, and its airspeed is actually going to be higher you can see here this thing's 311 on the 183 and 582 for boost but you go 342 and 606 with the full boost on the attacker. So the attacker is actually really good at getting across the battlefield, uh, being able to chase people down. It has great acceleration characteristics, but it has a lower altitude ceiling. But it didn't seem to affect us that much. We were able to get up there a few times and it seemed to hold its own. And we were able to take out that MiG-9 fairly easily once he allowed us to be able to shoot him by turning off. Uh, again, we were getting up to altitudes we weren't supposed to be at. The 20 millimeter cannons are going to be these 20 millimeter Hispanos, but they're different than the Spitfire 14 because you're going to see that they have an asterisk. So they actually pump out a little bit more damage, similar to what we saw on the Seahawk gets the same Hispanos, the Mark V asterisk, which is a balancing mechanic to allow them to get the same guns because historically they did, or at least were going to. And they want to give them a little bit more damage so they're still competitive. 520 damage per second, uh, and it really is 520 damage per second. 20 millimeter cannons is kind of the, the pinnacle of weapon choice when it comes to World of Warplanes, because 20 millimeter cannons, at least on fighters and multi-rolls, they're very consistent for those enduring engagements especially when you get kind of into a bit of a tourney engagement they're easier to pull lead they're easier to judge whether or not you're going to make contacts you have enough fire going out in your test shots that you can get a good hit indicator and then just unload with these things they don't overheat nearly as quickly as the big 30 millimeters do uh, but they also do enough damage that they're not as piddly as the 50 cal machine guns for those of us that have struggled going down the american fighter line where you know that the time to kill is going to be pretty substantial against anything that has any type of damage resistance but the 20s are that nice in between that sweet spot everybody likes and the attacker has those the reason the attacker i think gets a really bad rap is that the attacker is not a spit 14 it is far from it because a spit 14 is going to have some of the best turn times in the game it has really good altitude performance gets those 20s that we talked about but this aircraft with a 10 second turn time is actually going to be better than almost all the other altitude fighters with the exception of the americans at the altitudes that you'll find these aircraft fighting now i keep saying altitude fighter but we know that this thing with 6500 feet that isn't that good that isn't that good for 
true altitude fighters. This is kind of hitting this weird in between this and the F6U of what we would consider being altitude altitude fighters and we'll go ahead and, and dip in here and take a look at some examples but like the fj1 the fj1's altitude performance is 8500 okay that's a true altitude fighter and if you look at the let's look at the ussr when it comes to the mig 9 the mig 9's altitude performance 8200 a little bit lower but pretty good uh, and you see similar performance coming from the 1092 so what is this thing it's a weird in between but it doesn't mind being at higher altitude and with a 10 second turn time even though you're going to lose some of that when you get above your optimum it's still going to be able to turn fairly well with most of the other altitude fighters the only ones it's going to have issues with are going to be your fj1 and then of of course this nasty little bugger right here <laughs> which is like the fj1 with two less machine guns with a little bit more going for it when it comes to acceleration and stuff but all in all, solid all-around fighter, and it does have the ability to still play with some of the lower altitude fighter like the LA-160 and the Yak-19, mostly because it has enough turn capability to get on the LA-160 or the Yak-19, especially if they're not paying attention, and then hammer down the throttle with that massive acceleration to be able to get out of that engagement and then come back for another boom and zoom run or just move on to another sector whatever it wants to do so the problem i'm facing with the attacker is that while i typically sell my tier 9 to get the tier 10 i'm not going to be able to do that because I can't let this one go because it's such a good all-around aircraft that I think it would be a mistake to sell it. I think it is a solid platform. I'm looking forward to the Swift despite all the problems people say there is with the guns and its handling, but the attacker is just a stellar platform for being this excellent all-arounder, being able to hit the high, mid, low altitude and still do really good work with those 20s. So hopefully if you guys are going down the Spitfire line, when you get to this aircraft, you aren't disappointed because it's not as turny as your Spitfire, but you play to the strengths that it does have, and I think you'll have a really good time with it. I know I am. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.